Hey, what's going on, everybody? It's ETA Prime back here again. Today, we're going to be taking a quick look at the world's first consumer-level ARM-based Linux tablet. This is known as the JingPad A1, and basically, this is a Linux-based tablet. We're not running Android on this. We do have an 11-inch AMOLED 2K display and an 8,000 milliamp hour battery. It also has 8 gigabytes of LPDDR4 RAM and 256 gigabytes of storage, plus a micro SD card slot, so we can up that by quite a bit. Right out of the box, this runs their custom version of Jing OS, and the desktop is actually KDE Plasma. And it looks like they do include kind of a folio case here, and a stylus. So yeah, I've been waiting a little while to get my hands on the JingPad A1. Uh, it looks super interesting to me. I'm a huge fan of Linux. And along with the tablet, they're also offering an optional keyboard and trackpad combo. So the tablet itself looks like it's built really nicely. It's very reminiscent of some of the newer Android tablets that are coming out of China. We've got a 16 megapixel camera around back here. And if we look close enough, it does have kind of a honeycomb or maybe a carbon fiber look design to it. And as for I.O., we have these pogo pads around the back here. We've also got some pogo pads on the side and a micro SD slash SIM card tray. So this is the first time I'm booting the tablet up. I did have to put a little bit of charge on this battery. It does 18 watt quick charging, which really isn't that quick given that we have an 8000 milliamp hour battery. But they're claiming up to 10 hours of video playback on this unit. And for setup, Jing OS is just going to walk you through it. You'll need to name the tablet, set up Wi-Fi, set your region, and you should be good to go. When it comes to the specs of the JingPad A1, like we mentioned, this is an ARM-based tablet. So for that CPU, we have the Unisoc Tiger T7510. This is an 8-core ARM CPU. We've got four A75 cores at 2 GHz and four A55 cores at 1.8. The GPU is a PowerVR GM9445 at 850 MHz. We've got 8 GB of LPDDR4 RAM, 256 GB of UMCP storage, micro SD card support, and this does have 2.4 and 5 gigahertz dual band Wi-Fi built in. We've also got Bluetooth 5.0, a six axis gyro, that 8,000 milliamp hour battery with 18 watt quick charging capabilities. And with the A1, they do include the JingPad pencil, which has 4,096 pressure levels. And like we mentioned, this is running JingPad OS. Okay, first things first, one thing I really do like about this is this add-on keyboard. It is optional and you will have to purchase it separately, but it works out really well with this tablet. Nice trackpad, good key travel. We've got all of the shortcuts built into the keyboard, brightness, sound, we even got our home button. So we press that, it'll bring us right back into the main desktop, and the trackpad also has multi-gesture functionality built in. I really do like what they've done with Jing OS here. It's very reminiscent of Android, even when we go into the settings here. If I didn't know any better and I took a quick glance at this, I'd say it was running Android, the way everything looks. But it's actually their custom version of Jing OS, and as for the desktop they're using here, this is KDE Plasma. I have gone through and run all of the updates, and in order to get back out of an app, you can use the home button on the keyboard, or you can swipe up once on the touch screen itself. We've got Terminal built in, and there is an app store. It's very limited right now, so if you did want to install something, you could always do it through Terminal. And in my next video on this, I'll have a bunch of stuff installed. I've just really been messing around with this. The only thing I've installed through Terminal right now is just NeoFetch to take a look at everything. We've got that 8-core Unisoc CPU, 8 gigs of RAM, and 256 gigabytes of storage. The UI here is surprisingly quick, and they do have their own app store built in. Like I mentioned, it is a bit limited right now. A lot of this stuff is optimized to run on this tablet. And in the future, I suspect we'll see a lot more apps coming here. It does come pre-installed with Chromium, but I'm going to go ahead and install Firefox real quick. It's actually on the main page, so if I swipe one of these ways, we can get right back to it, or you can just search from the search bar up top. We'll just choose Git, and it should install it for us. I've searched for a few apps in the store here that I usually like running on my x86 Linux PC, but they're not available. So it's telling me that a lot of this stuff is really optimized for ARM, or at least Jing OS. Because a lot of the stuff also runs on ARM, but this is actually really good because if they only put apps that work well with the hardware, then you'll have a much better user experience. But in the end, it's still going to be a little limited. That's why we can go into Terminal and install basically any Linux app from Terminal as long as it runs on an ARM CPU. So I'm going to go ahead and load up GIMP here. And this is just a free image editing software. Really awesome, very powerful, and it actually loads up pretty quick here. I'm going to open up a new canvas or a new workspace, and then I'm going to grab the JingPad pencil and just see if it works right out of the box. I did charge it up a bit. So I've just set up a 1080p canvas here, 
and the pen is working great, but I don't have any kind of pressure sensitivity. I've gone into the GIMP settings and tried to enable it, but uh, unfortunately, at least with this version of GIMP, I can't get the pressure settings to work with the JingPad pencil. So the next thing I wanted to test was a little bit of video playback from YouTube using the built-in Chromium browser. We're also going to test this with Firefox. I am connected to my 5 GHz network in the house. It's actually really quick. And for this, we're just going to go with the 1080p 60 video, and if we're getting good performance, we can up it from there. All right, 60 FPS. We are set at 1080p. We'll go full screen with it. This is a demo video I use a lot on lower end ARM and x86 PCs, so uh, I'm not even going to turn stats for nerds on just yet. I want to see how it looks. I can usually tell if it's skipping a bit. And I mean, just a few seconds into the video, I can tell you that this is definitely dropping a lot of frames at 1080p. So now I want to move over to Firefox. We'll turn on stats for nerds with that. Okay, so I've moved in a bit closer so we could get a better look. We're using Firefox 1080p 60fps. And as you can see, I mean, this is just continuously dropping frames. I mean, that is a ton of frames to drop at a 1080p 60 video. Let's check this same video out in Chromium. We're going to move back over there with Stats for Nerds on screen. So that first video we took a look at, 1080p 60, I told you that it was dropping frames. It definitely was. And we do get a lot of stutters here at 1080 60. I was really expecting Chromium to work much better than Firefox, given that it should be an optimized version for this hardware since it's preloaded. But unfortunately, that's not the case, at least right now, with the software we have. Another thing I wanted to test on the JingPad was some emulation, and no matter what version of RetroArch I install, it keeps crashing on me. But I mean, overall, the JingPad A1 definitely has some potential, but it's really going to come down to software optimization. This is an earlier version of their operating system, so I definitely expected some bugs here or there. It does have potential, and when it comes to the hardware, it's not the most powerful, but it should definitely get you by for web browsing, light emulation, 1080p, 60 video, document editing, and some photo editing should work out really well as soon as they get their software right on the JingPad A1. So I'm going to spend some more time with this. I do want to test out a bunch of different applications and things like that. I kind of wish we had more I.O. Being a Linux tablet, we only got one USB Type-C port on this. It would have been nice to have at least a full-size USB Type-C, but I know that can be hard to implement in such a thin design. This USB Type-C does support OTG, so you can plug in hard drives and things like that. And I gotta say, they did choose an absolutely brilliant display. AMOLED 2K 11 inch, it's probably not coming across on camera as good as it looks to the naked eye, but they did choose an absolutely beautiful display for the JingPad A1. So really, it comes down to time and optimization for the software. I will keep you updated. I'm going to run some tests on this. We'll get some benchmarks installed, and we'll take another look at it in about a week. But that's going to wrap it up for this one. Really appreciate you watching. If you're interested in learning more about the JingPad A1, I will leave a few links in the description. If you have any questions, let me know in the comments below. And like always, thanks for watching.